can you believe it when I say our entire coastline is divided into different zones? You have to believe it because it is the truth. Yes, I am talking about the coastal regulation zone notification which is released by the Ministry of Environment. And here is everything you need to know about the CRZ notification. See, in the year 1991, the Union Ministry of Environment notified the Coastal Regulation Zone notification. So, what does the notification do? See, it declares certain coastal stretches as Coastal Regulation Zone under Section 3 of Environment Protection Act 1986. So, this is about the Coastal Regulation Zone notification. See, largely, the CRZ area is based on the high tide line. High tide line means the line on the land up to which the highest water line reaches during the spring tide. See, this HTL, which is the short form of high tide line, is demarcated by the National Center for Sustainable Coast Management. Now, look at this image here. Here, the red line is high tide line and the blue line is low tide line. So, the low tide line is nothing but the lowest level up to which the water reaches during the spring tide. Now, with this basics, let us see about the different zonations in CRZ. First of all, we are going to see CRZ 1. It includes areas between low tide line and high tide line. And it also includes areas that are ecologically sensitive and important such as national parks, marine parks, sanctuaries, reserve forests, wildlife habitats, mangroves, coral reefs, etc. And it also includes area which are closer to breeding and spawning grounds of fish. And it also includes areas of historical importance. See, all these areas, they come under CRZ1. And these areas are the most protected area. In this zone, no new construction will be permitted except for the projects relating to the Department of Atomic Energy and construction of Trans Harbour Sea Link and Roads. So, this is the exception. Now, apart from this, you should know that if an area that comes under CRZ1 is not an eco-sensitive zone, then the exploration and extraction of natural gas, salt harvesting and desalination plants are also allowed. So, this is also an exception. But the condition is the area under CRZ1 should not be an eco-sensitive zone. And only then these activities are allowed. Now, moving on to the next zone which is CRZ2. Now, look at this image here. Here, CRZ2 is highlighted in the orange color. This includes area landward of high tide line which includes the areas that are already developed. See, the crucial point here is it includes areas that are landward of high tide line. So, it extends from the sea towards the land. See, here developed area is referred to as that area within the municipal limits or in other legally designated urban areas which is already substantially built up. See, what does this mean? This means that these developed areas, they have already been provided with drainage, approach roads, and other infrastructural facilities such as water supply, sewerage, etc. See here, no new construction shall be made on the seaward side. See, we saw that the area under CRZ2 extends from high tide line towards the land. So, what activity is prohibited here? New construction is not allowed on the seaward side, which is towards the sea. And then, reconstruction of authorized building will be permitted only if it adheres to the FSI norms. Here, FSI is nothing but floor space index. Now, that is all about the CRZ2. Now, coming to CRZ3, see, this includes areas that are relatively undisturbed and those which do not belong to either Category 1 or Category 2. See, in this image, CRZ3 is highlighted in red color here. Now, as you can see, it is subdivided into two areas. The first area is 200 meter landward of the high tide line and it is called as the no development zone. See here, no construction shall be permitted except for the construction of gardens, pastures, parks, play fields, forestry and salt manufacture from seawater. Now, coming to the second subdivision, it is the area between 200 meters and 500 meters landward. See here, development of vacant plots for construction is allowed only after prior approval of states. Now, this is about CRZ3. 
Now coming to the final one which is CRZ4. See this includes areas 12 nautical miles seaward from the low tide line. See CRZ4 is nothing but the territorial waters of the country. See in this area traditional fishing is allowed but discharge of untreated seawage is prohibited. Now these are the different zones that are categorized under the CRZ notification. Now finally coming to who has the authority to give clearance. According to 2019 CRZ notification, the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change will oversee the matter of CRZ clearance only for CRZ 1 and CRZ 4. Do you remember what areas come under CRZ 1 and CRZ 4? Yeah, CRZ 1 includes ecologically vulnerable areas and CRZ 4 includes area between low tide line and 12 nautical miles seaward. So for these two categories, Ministry of Environment gives the clearance. And the areas which comes under the other two categories that is CRZ 3 and CRZ 2, the power of clearance has been designated at the state level. That is the authority to give clearance has been delegated to the states. And now I hope you are very clear about the different zones in the CRZ notification and you will be able to tell who has the authority to give the CRZ clearance. Now if you want to know more environment related topics like this, subscribe to Shankar IAS Academy's YouTube channel or watch the daily news analysis of Shankar IAS Academy. Thank you.